The next thing we're going to look at is what's known as kinetic versus thermodynamic enolates. So if you look at the ketone shown here, notice that there are two different types of protons on either side of this carbonyl group. So two different alpha carbons, two different protons that can be removed. The proton that's removed mo most quickly or most easily is the one that's least sterically hindered or the most sterically accessible. So in the presence of B, a base, that proton can be removed and the enolate is generated. This is known as a kinetic enolate because it arises from removal of the most easily accessible proton. That requires the lowest activation energy. The other possibility would be for the base to remove the most sterically hindered proton, as I'm showing with the red arrow. Now, because removal of that more substituted proton gives a more stable alkene, this is the more stable enolate of the two. So it's known as the thermodynamic enolate. So the kinetic product, or the kinetic enolate, forms first. In a situation where an equilibrium is set up, or the deprotonation is reversible, that kinetic enolate can go back to the starting material, and then eventually, after that equilibrium goes back and forth, back and forth, eventually the more stable product is formed. If we look at this using a reaction coordinate diagram, notice that we have at the lowest energy the neutral starting material. What takes the highest amount of energy is the formation of the thermodynamic enolate. And what takes less energy, but leads to a less stable product, is formation of the kinetic enolate. So higher activation energy, more stable product. Lower activation energy, less stable product. So when B is going to form first, if an equilibrium gets set up, eventually the more stable enolate A will be formed.